Twitter ban in Nigeria. What does this really mean? Social media is an intrinsic part of human lives. It is more than just freedom. It's a powerful tool that has destabilized oppressive government and saved lives. Imagine for a moment that all of that was suddenly taken away. This week on Fitch's Stories, we're taking a look at the federal government's ban on Twitter, how the ban currently affects Nigerian users, other countries that have banned the use of social media due to divergent reasons, and Nigeria as a new member of this list. On Friday, the 4th of June, 2021, the Minister of Information and Culture, Lai Mohammed, via a statement by his special assistant on media, Shegwadi Emi, announced the immediate indefinite suspension of Twitter operations in Nigeria over the persistent use of the platform for activities that are capable of undermining the corporate existence of Nigeria. The suspension in Africa's most populous country came two days after the social media giant deleted a tweet from President Mohammed Buhari's account for violating its rules. Nigeria's face-off with Twitter started on May 29th when President Mohamed Buhari threatened to deal with separatist groups accused of violence in the language they understand. A reference to the country's brutal civil war more than 50 years ago. Twitter blocked Buhari from tweeting for 12 hours and ordered him to delete the post, which it claimed violated the site's rules, the BBC reported. President Buhari is the latest head of state to face sanctions from Twitter. Earlier this year, the company banned former President Donald Trump and deleted an account ostensibly linked to Iran's supreme leader. In light of Twitter ban in Nigeria on Monday the 7th of June, the NBC went further to issue an order for broadcast stations in Nigeria to deactivate their Twitter accounts in line with the federal government's suspension of Twitter operations in Nigeria. This move has understandably aggrieved the affected users of the platform as some celebrities have expressed their displeasure on the FG's ban. I think that it's a, it's a, a shame that upon all the issues that we're facing as a nation, um, you know, we're as unsafe as we've ever been. Um, kidnapping is on the rise. Terrorism is on the rise. Banditry is on the rise. Armed robbery is on the rise. You know, our educational sector is in tatas, our healthcare is nothing to, to be proud of. Literally, everywhere you turn in Nigeria, there are issues. And even with all of this going on, so because Twitter deleted a tweet from the president, the Nigerian government decides that the best course of action is to ban the service, which is a service that not, number one, the young people of Nigeria use to express themselves. And so you're infringing on their freedom of speech. That's number one. Number two, it's a service that young people use for business. It's how they advertise small businesses. It's how they, they make money. It's how influencers make money. It's how small business owners make money. Um, and so the reaction automatically is to ban. I think it's, it's sad when leaders lose any sense of empathy and any opportunity to dialogue and see reason, and their automatic reaction is to ban. I've seen worse things on Twitter, you know, than what Barry tweeted, to be honest, in terms of bullying and all of that, violent threats. I mean, imagine what Trump was saying even when he was president. And when the looting starts, the shooting starts, and things like that. It was after he left presidency that they took him, out, took down his Twitter page and all that. Now that being said, Twitter is an American company, not a Nigerian company. So for a foreign company to take down the tweet of a of the president of the sovereign state is quite stretching, you know. So I mean, we have to look at it as from the point of view of our own citizenship as Nigerians. Like, this is our country. Regardless of our relationship with our president and our administration, you understand, it is a slap in the face of the entire nation that Twitter would take down the post of our president, regardless, you know, of anything. And the president's response also is absolutely wrong, you know, to also now use his own arbitrary power to take down Twitter. Especially when Nigerians don't have their own option. And banning social media platforms doesn't make sense. It doesn't even work in China, where they say Nigeria has gone to ask for help to block VPNs. It doesn't work. You cannot really block people from getting on any social media platform in this day and age. You know, uh, for example, my manager can tweet for me from London right now, and he, he tweets for me. He's going to tweet for me today. 
you know, uh, I don't, I've never sent a tweet in my life. I give it to my manager to do whatever tweet I want. So, what was the ban? Am I not a Nigerian? You know, so um, the president's reaction is also one of uh, a weak president, weak because we are a weak country. That's why it's like bang, bang. You know, because really he should be able to call Jack Dorsey for a meeting, and Jack Dorsey will come and meet him, and he states his displeasure at Jack Dorsey's behavior, gives Twitter a, fa a fine, you know, and the, and the nation moves on, you know. But I guess because we are a weak country, we have to show, uh, we have to go to the extreme to prove our strength that is not really there, you know. For me, it's not even about the Twitter that I'm actually disappointed in. It's the fact that we have a lot of thriving issues in the country that we've been shouting about for a long time. And, like, they just turn deaf ears to, to issues that are disturbing the country and focusing on the things that are not really the problems of this country. You know, and I feel, I really feel disappointed. And, um, I mean, I just hope I hope it changes, but personally, I'm highly disappointed. I mean, it's no surprise, but unfortunately, it's, it's where we find ourselves now. So. There's no gain say that the shutdown has left millions feeling choked, impacted on businesses, and left many feeling isolated, as Twitter is already an integral social, economic, commercial nerve for the youth who make the largest percentage of the Nigerian populace. For artists and their fans alike, Twitter has the clear advantage over Facebook and Instagram when it comes to real-time communication with fans. Whereas on other platforms, posting several times a day can come across as excessive and annoying, it's perfectly acceptable and normal to tweet regularly throughout the day. For some concerned youth, the social media ban takes away the basic right of free communication. They're not allowed to protest on the streets, neither are they allowed to use social media to make their point known. Many expressed that during the 2015 general election campaigns, the current administration relied on a broad spectrum of young people who ran social media campaigns, especially on Twitter, to using hashtags that tailor to their concerns. Twitter was also used to tally and monitor election results on a largely volunteer basis. With that being said, let's take a look at other countries that have taken the same route of banning social media. China. Where else would this story begin but with China? This communist nation has a long and storied history of throwing its weight around to basically force its citizens to leave since 1900s. The Great Firewall of China was created for the explicit reason to keep blacklisted websites away from the eyes of its people. They shut down the big three social channels as far back as 2009. China also bans VPNs, except for those that confirm to wishes of the government. Banning social media helps keep China in a metaphorical bubble, keeping a lead on all political and national events and allowing the Chinese government to control the spin and how events are relayed to the global public. Turkey Turkey and Twitter go way back. Turkey's Prime Minister Tayyip Erdogan banned the service after audio recordings were shared along the platform that incriminated his government on allegations of corruption. He claimed that this action was undertaken by his political enemies and represented an attempt to undermine his regime. His solution? Since 2015, bans have been lifted, but Turkey completely blocked access to Twitter. Erdogan claimed that his enemies were abusing Twitter as a system and went as far as to vow to wipe out Twitter during his 2014 incident. The ban only lasted for two weeks until it was temporarily blocked again in 2015. This time, Facebook and YouTube were also shut down too. Vietnam The Vietnamese government is like a contestant on a matchmaking reality TV. They can't quite decide how they feel about social media or any real-time uncensored news for that matter. It started in 2009 when the country blocked access to Facebook for one week. Though they never officially acknowledged the ban, it still took place as a way to keep citizens from criticizing the government. Today, Vietnam continues randomly blocking access to social media sites, despite the government's insistence that it does not censor social media. It went on to ban LinkedIn in June of 2016. The government attempted to deny the action, but this was later proven to be a lie. Iran in 2009, massive protests from millions began to sprout up all throughout the country following the Iranian presidential election of the same year. 
the election result didn't sit well with a large faction of Iranians and they resorted to social media as a communication tool. In response, the government banned Facebook, Twitter and YouTube to squash out dissenting ideas. What's interesting to note is that while the country censors social media for its people, the government maintains a social media presence. For example, the president of Iran has a Twitter account and uses it for administrative duties. He maintains two accounts, one in English and the other in Farsi, where he tweets about foreign and domestic affairs. Bangladesh in 2015, the Bangladesh Supreme Court decided to uphold a death sentence of two convicted war criminals, and the outcry forced them to completely sever internet access for everyone. When the internet came back following this brief outage, a number of services remained blocked. This included social media sites like Facebook and popular messaging apps like WhatsApp. At first, the government said that it was a mistake, except that wasn't true. They eventually amended their statement citing safety concerns as to the reasoning for the block. Facebook access was down for over a month, Twitter and several chat apps remained banned for a much longer period of time. North Korea North Korea censors everything. Well, basically, their censorship extends far beyond the realm of social media. Most of the population is banned from using the internet at all, let alone Western social platforms like Facebook or Twitter. Internet access is exclusively reserved for high-ranking government officials, scientists and elite students. But even this rare individuals have their access tightly monitored. This oversight applies to North Korean officials stationed abroad too. All internet connections that these people have access to are monitored by North Korean staff members. The country aims to control all forms of media that its people consume, from radio to state-sponsored television to a government-sanctioned internet. Most North Koreans have no real sense of what the internet truly is and what it can do. Is social media right? Yes, because it is intrinsically tied to personal freedoms. According to Article 19 of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, it states that Everyone has the right to freedom of opinion and expression. This right includes freedom to hold opinions without interference and to seek, receive and impart information and ideas through any media and regardless of frontiers. There you have it on this week's episode of Future Stories. Stick around for more interesting pieces.